Ecologies is a straight up super cool game made by a high school teacher. Uh, and it was so good that his students were like, man, make this a public game. And I totally agree. I mean, he explained it to me the first time I was like, wow, this is freaking awesome. Uh, in Ecologies, you are creating a food, uh, a web food, uh, a food web, a food web in a, in a specific biome and, and raising organisms and such. In fact, let me just show you how to play. This is Ecologies. Ecologies is about growing your ecological biome. So in this game, you are creating food webs of an ec ecological biome. Uh, what you're going to be doing is starting with the basic biome of your, you know, whatever you're able to play out at the time, right? There's marine, grassland, tropical, and so forth. Um, and throughout the game, you will be grabbing cards and playing cards to really structure this up in a really nice flow of a food web. Now, each card is very interesting here. You have the type of card it is, the name, and the points that it scores. It'll show you what they eat and what it is eaten by, which is creating the food web. Now this right here is a producer. Every biome has to start with a producer before you put out any um, feeding source like animals or, or predators or prey. So throughout the game, you're gonna be building your web, starting with the biome, including um, a producer, and then building upward with organisms, making sure that each organism played is in its correct level. As you see here, we have a beetle with 0.5 points at C1, which can be played right above the producer. Sometimes you run into cards that can be played realistically in any category above, this one specifically is above C1, so it could be played above the beetle, or let's say you got the scorpion out first, which is a C2 and would be played right above the beetle at a 0.5, you'd be able to play this owl as a C3 because it eats a beetle. And as you're playing, you'll start noticing other really interesting things like this is a white and pink card versus a full pink card. This could be played in the tundra or it could be played in the desert. And as you're building up your categories, right, um, having the, the producer and then leveled, so we'll do beetle to lizard or to scorpion to lizard and and he eats uh, a, a lizards here so he'd be up here once you create a nice flow of five cards you'd be able to score this well you'll score regardless but you'll be able to activate the biome for being complete and this one specifically all your organisms are protected and you'll be like okay protected from what as you might ask any abiotic factors that can be played by opponents, which is a nice addition to this awesome ecological building. You can search discard piles for one card, draw four cards, draw five cards, all players discard all but five cards. Some of these can get even deeper, like destroying an entire biome or destroying a, a, a card from a biome. And let's say you were to do that, right? Let's say when an opponent would destroy my beetle, anything above my beetle would be destroyed with it. But what's awesome about that is as you're building, and I'll go through some examples here uh, in a second, you can place as many producers as you'd like. You could build as many different webs as you'd like. You're not just stuck with one. So there's plenty of strategy to go through. Now let's see what a game kind of looks like here. The winning condition of this game is scoring 15 points. As I showed you earlier, each card has points on here. When these add up to 15, that player wins. Everyone will start with seven cards, naturally. All right, let's get started here. So I'm gonna look at my, my deck here, or my, my hand of seven cards, because each player is gonna get seven cards here. And it looks like I have one uh, biome available, the grassland biome, but I don't have any producers for that biome yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the round by drawing two cards. And I got an abiotic factor. And let's, let's read what it does here. So I can add this to any ecology. It becomes, C2 becomes the maximum trophic level. So it could really damage a biome. So I wanna be able to use this against somebody. So I could play two cards, right? Now, it looks like I can only tactically just play one at the moment. So I'm gonna play this grassland biome out and get this biome started. I can get a producer and then C1 through C4. Once I get five active cards in the food web, I can trigger this, which allows me to destroy a C3 or above every other turn. 
That's pretty damaging. Um, I don't think I could play any of the cards here. And I got one of these special cards here. This is a scavenging decomposer. It kind of feeds on everything um, and could really be played for anything and helps increase the chances of getting those five cards to trigger the ecology bonus. So this is a really good card to have. However, I don't have that biome right now. So and instead of in playing a card, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna discard one, and then I'm going to turn because I'm gonna go ahead and I try to do a trade earlier because the the order is draw two cards, trade, play, and then purchase. So in the purchase, I can trade four cards for a new card. I can't play it this turn, but I can receive it. Now instead of playing four unused cards to get this, I could have used three cards in play. But that's what I did. So there's my hand. So the next player goes and he looks at his hand. Uh, he is starting off pretty strong here. I see I see some biotic factors here. Okay, so he notices he has a marine biome. So he's like, okay, oh, you know, I'm available for trades. Like, I noticed you have a grassland biome. I don't have any producers, but I do have a C1 uh, for that grassland biome. Do you possibly have a producer for the marine biome? And, you know, this guy, is, so he's like, ah, uh, yeah, sure, I do. And he's not thinking too smart. Like, wow, you're really going to get this dude started with his biome, obviously. But he's like, hey, let's do the trade. So he does the trade. He gets the C1 Impala. And this dude gets his producer now he gets to play um, did I draw two cards one two three four five six oops there's the two cards anyways so he puts out his marine biome and his producer now he's really working towards a marine uh, food web okay and he's he's not gonna purchase anything he's pretty content with what he has here and this player goes grabs two cards and let's see what he has. Oh, yep, he's got the tropical biome. He has a desert bomb. He's not even gonna do trades. He's he's ooh, a tundra biome. Oh man, and he has a producer here to get this guy started. If this dude has anything he may need. Now it looks like he does uh, he has he has a tropical biome, so he really wants these cards here. Uh, he doesn't know he has them, so he's like, oh, you know, I'm looking for a producer or uh, for um, for the tropical forest biome. And this guy's like, oh, I, I might have that. I I'm looking for a producer for the grass and he's like, all right, let's do this trade. Sounds good. All right, so there goes the trade. Now this guy's actually, if you look at the old opponent, the first opponent, he's actually not doing too bad, right? He gets out this here producer. Now he could put a C1 or he could play this here C1 or C2. Uh, the smartest move is, would be to go in this <clears throat> direction here, all right? Producer, C1 Impala, and then the C2 Tortoise, which, he doesn't eat Impalas, so what it sounds like to me is this would have to be a separate. So since he has this producer out, right, he could actually play like this. He can have two C1s next to each other, as long as you have at least one producer out. If somebody destroys this producer, all your cards above that producer are dead, but still, I mean, you can get multiple chains going here. So that could be one of his plans. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if he were to do this, this is not active as three cards, you know, in order to activate your ecology bonus. This is actually two separate webs needing five cards each, right? Anyway, so this guy gets his, his producer for his tropical forest. So he plays his tropical forest. He puts out his producer. That's two rounds or two to play. He's not going to do any purchasing. He does have a nice hefty amount of cards, but he's saving up for that. This player goes. Oh wow, he just he just hit it, man. He got the freaking forest biome. Does he want to do any trading? He could destroy a producer. So he's like, I made this trade with you. In his mind, I made this trade with you, but whatever, dude. Alright, destroys his producer just like that. Remember what I said earlier with these separate entities, like being different food webs? Both dunzo, right that. Anyways. So he plays his producer just to mock this guy, and then he plays his C1 Impala. Okay, this player got a forest biome. Doesn't have any. He has a. He could do a nice trade with that if he wanted to. Does he have any marine? Let's see. Nope. 
you could ask them, oh, do you have any marine um, uh, organisms? Because I got this very satisfying looking producer to fix what this evil player did to you. He doesn't though. Um, let's see. He, mm, I guess he'll just put out this here. Buy him, and of course he wants to trade some cards away uh, to get a new card and hope for the best, which is a producer for a different biome. And this will repeat, right? Uh, he's got a bunch of desert biomes. He, he needs to get rid of that somehow, but you know, you, you get the gist of it. You're building up, and what you're na naturally looking for, you know, you could rearrange these at any time if you want, but let's say this guy built something like this, okay? Um, he has right here one solid build, uh, producer, and then organisms from C1 up to, to C4, and he includes a, an SD, he, whichever one he wants, but he has five here. Right, so now this ecology is active. So every turn, every other turn, he gets to destroy anybody else's C3 or higher. Now this is, well, I guess it's supposed to be like this, but he's this is acting as a C3, or I guess this is a C3 too. Um, so this would be destroyed. Anything above that would also be destroyed. Uh, do you do you see what I'm saying? And then of course, you know, while you're playing, you want to keep track of the points here. So if we were to tally these all up, there are two ways to do this. If you're a little more simpler, every organism would count as one point. Or you could, all right, let's see here. We have, there's one, uh, this is two, three, 4.5, um, 5.25. So this player already has five points and 20.25. He needs 15 to win. And everyone's doing this simultaneously, right? And you just continue to do what I was showing you until somebody reaches those 15 points. It's funny, because when I first pulled this game out, I was like, man, this looks extremely complicated. The rule book doesn't read too well. Uh, but after reading it, you literally have to read it from first page to the last page to actually understand how the game plays. You know, you can't just hop over to setup and hop over to how to play and all that. It makes a lot of sense, and it's actually really well developed, right? It's actually building a food chain. Each animal, each other, each animal eats other animals and can be eaten by other animals, and you have to stack them accordingly. Every biome has to start with a producer, because you can't create uh, a food web, web food, food web, without the right ingredients. The producer gets eaten by the insects, which gets eaten by like whatever, and eaten by this, and then you have the top tier lions eating everything below. And it's really fun that way. Because while you're building these things, you have to watch out for natural hazards or other players playing things that can damage your biomes, right? Maybe they could take out your whole producer and there goes everything you've worked for. Maybe they can take out like a level 3 animal and there goes the extinction. And oh man, we're in this death stranding now. But there's other things too, like uh, uh, getting like additional victory points for your score and such because this is a game and you are working towards 15 victory points do i like it i love it i really do it is a little on the steeper side of easy since i do review a lot of easy games this game just kind of caught my attention because it was so unique um specifically you get a lot of settler Catan vibes from it because you could do trades with people just reading out like you know i have uh, these producers, I'm looking for these biomes to get my thing started. And, you know, you can do like some mutual trades with each other, even though you're all fighting to win. But at the same time, you're like playing cards down and you're you're strategizing. Like, okay, if I can get a couple of these biomes out and I can get a couple uh, yellow biomes, I don't have to worry about losing one whole biome in the in the process because you know some of these higher tier organisms do score pretty high. And I know that yellow biomes have a really nice bonus payout when you do create the full web, like destroying other opponents' C3s, right? C3 organisms. And it's like you could make disasters in other people's games, or you could just work on scoring yourself. There's plenty of options, plenty of strategy. Why do you want this game? Well, let's see. Do you want to focus on building an entire habitat while destroying other people's habitats? Do you want something that's slightly more strategic than some of the other games I reviewed? Um, it's not difficult to pick up, but you will feel uh, you'll feel good about getting the strategy down for this game or getting down the the way this game plays. Why wouldn't you like this game? 
I mean, the artwork is all there. Every single card is pretty unique. There's a lot of great different organisms. It's, it's actually fun to see like they're not you know, using the same type of animal per level. It's really thought out. So that's not something you, that's something you'd want to see. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think like, what, what would you not like this game for? Maybe you just don't like animals. I don't, do you not like animals? Do you not want something super strategic? Yeah, it takes about an hour to play. Maybe that's your issue there. I can't think of any gameplay issues because I think the game plays very well. I think it's very well put together. Nope. Can't think of one thing I didn't like about this game. It's really good. So, with that said, this is just an opinion. It's only a review. Go ahead and leave me a like, subscribe, and comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.